All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to iCup TV. It'll be your epic and awesome caster fits here. And uh, you're, you're watching uh, Season 20, Week 1, Division B1 of Clan League between Dis uh, not Disturbed, but Black Dragon and their rep Fresh and Fun Pro Gaming team. And uh, spawning in the top left, it'll be our Orange Zero competing for Black Dragon. It will be Irish. And spawning in the bottom left, competing for Black Dragons as well, it'll be Hexa. And that will make the uh, Black Dragons team, is what I'll call them. And, and spawning in the top left, comp uh, competing for our reps, it will be our Blue Zerg. Fofo is going in the bottom left. It will be our yellow Zerg. Um, Zerg good or good is what I'm going to start calling him. But now, statistics of both these players and the map is Fighting Spirit. So, unlike the last two V2 I casted, that you're not like both teammates are not in like opposite positions like each other, like cross spawns and making it very, very difficult. At least they're on the same side. But keep in mind, though, it's really hard to go reinforce a teammate when both players are attacking, for example, you know, Hexa or whatever the guy's name would be. So, now, just talking about Irish, he's averaging 154 this game. He's from the United States of America. He's, he's been playing from seasons 18 and 22. He's a 2v2 player, a B-plus rank, and his current rank is 193 to 125 games lost. So that's pretty awesome. Compared to uh, his, uh, his partner, it will be Hexa, who will be our red for us, obviously speaking. He's from France. He's also played since uh, season uh, 18. He's a 2v2 player in a B rank, and his current stats are 81 and 38. And that's 30, 80, 80, 81 wins and 38 losses. Fofo is competing for refs, and he's our blue zerg, and he's going to be averaging 231 this game. He's Russian, he's been playing since season 19. He's a mixed player, he's a C minus 2v2 player currently, and he's 23 and 13 for his 2v2 stats. And finally, but, sur but surely not least, it will be Good, who's going to be. Averaging 249, he's a Russian as well, playing since season 19. He's a 2v2 player and a B minus 2v2 player at that. And his current stats are 66 and 30 for this current season. So we're seeing nine pool coming out of excuse me, of of good right here. We're seeing a nine pool as well coming out of a, a similar nine pool. No, actually, no, yeah, that was that was a nine pool coming out, but there's still no gas coming out of Irish right now compared to he's also getting up his Oh, but he went for a 12 hatch, actually. So we're actually... You could actually compare Irish versus... <laughs> Irish versus... I'm trying to remember all these guys. Fofo would be like kind of like this own ZVZ if you just blocked out this first half of the map over here. This would be like, like a standard ZVZ. But uh, we're not seeing that right now. But he's got, he did finally get his gas and we'll be getting another macro hatch behind this as well. But I believe he should eventually get up a couple lanes here. But he will be sending over six initial lanes over here right now. We're seeing no link production right now. We're seeing more. No, nope, we're seeing finally one more link coming out right now, but a little bit more delayed. You normally get around eight links after the. Some, you get eight links right when the pool hatches normally, but he's going to be sending his links over here, so it looks like he might look to potentially go for a, a group attack that could. Look, no, it looks like no. Looks like he'll be. No, eh, eh, it looks like he's doing what his own thing is. Now on Hexa front, the Protoss front has been pretty much. Well, there's really haven't been really much aggression on on any player uh, so far but he will be getting up cybercore and it looks like uh it's more of a this is normally this cybercore timing is normally when you get an expand behind it so he probably got gas earlier and he probably pumped out one or two zealots which is exactly what he did which would be the equivalent to around, around a nexus so not bad at all but uh, these links will be making me up here now will that sunken will not be in range of this ramp though keep in mind so that will not be help uh, that will not help him at all but he does have his natural up uh yo you Yo, Fofo has his uh, Fofo has his natural up, but it looks like he's gonna go for it. And there aren't that many links for see for Irish right here. It's gonna look very, very tense right now. Good does have a significant more amount of links right here, and you know, just grieving them as well, waiting for his waiting for the extra batch of of his links and an extra batch of Fofo links to come out here. And this might be just game over outright here for Irish if he's not gonna be able to defend it. He's bringing out two more sunkins. And our one creep and one sunken's just about to finish in the mineral line there. So I believe this sunken will fall when this engagement does happen right here. And it looks like it, and it looks like there's gonna be engagement. Happening. There's just so many links on here, link on link action. It looks like Irish is losing a significant amount of his links right here. And it looks like the sunken is gonna be target fired down and will lose that. And right now Irish is losing all of his links right now. And uh, we'll be trying to get to that uh, that to that sunken right there, but. Uh, Nice positioning over there was will not let it get surrounded and that other something will be there to deal with that as well. So a very, very tense moment so far, but hasn't really done the guaranteed damage what they have done. And they've done I mean if we're just looking at what I what uh 
good to have right now. He put down a macro patch, no lair quite yet. He's high in the mineral count right now, so we'll see what he's going to put down. He probably should do just waves of drones, would probably just be the best thing, because he's done... He's done a nine pool. He's done it. He needs to get drones. Like, that's what he needs to be doing. He's getting Overlord as he's still at nine supply. Keep that in mind. He's at nine supply. Now, we're seeing from Protoss, he does have a Corsair out. Or, he's going to get it. No, he does have a Corsair out right now. And it's just popped from the Stargate. But now, oddly enough, Irish has a significant amount of Lind right here because he didn't take that much economic damage. He's gotten a way to get a macro hatch and still be okay with it. So, thankfully, due to the positioning of his Lincoln, that he did not allow those links to get in the middle line and potentially decimate his army, which would which would now mean that uh, he would be knocked out. And it looks like this this overlord will get sniped off. But uh, what what that means is uh, if 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 I got ex um, pretty much eliminated, that means they could just target fire on on um, the Protoss. And unless the Protoss is really far ahead to begin with, I mean, two armies versus one is really intensively uh, any kind of upgrade on the enemy. But there's going to be a lot of Ling and Ling action here. Irish Jay completely surrounded here. We'll be seeing a reinforcement right here, but it looks like he's going to be able to run away without losing all of his links. But that's a lot of Zerglin blood right there. And oh my goodness gracious, another Ling and Ling battle is happening over here, but I don't think Irish is in the scenario. A lot of his links are weakened right there. So we want to be careful right here. And we're seeing more links. We, we're not... Okay, finally, more drones right there. I was going to say, this would be kind of ridiculous if... If Good was not going to bring in more drones. But that is three Corsair, though. And there's no, and there's no anti-air deal with this. Uh, you know, Lair is out. Spire's about three-quarters of the way done right now. Or two-thirds of the way done, I should probably say. Probably uh, three-quarters of the way done now. And we're getting another macro hatch right there. And... Right now, it looks like he may want to look to expand here. He's off a double Stargate. No uh, air upgrades we speak of right now. And the Corsair are continuing just able to, you know, supply block uh, <laughs> uh, Fofo right now. He's, and he's just, then what do you do? Like, you, he needs to get the Hydra out, but he he can't afford, he can't get a Hydra out because he, he he's, he's too significant in the supply block. And, you know, that's 2v2. 2v2 is, like, an odd mix of 1v1. Kind of random, wacky stuff happens in 2v2. That's kind of what looks very, very odd in uh, the eyes of a 1v1 caster. But, regardless, that Overlord will get sniped off right here and will ultimately fall. Where that is a lot of lanes coming out of the iron, so will he be able to have enough damage here? That is a pretty good... A pretty good Sim Sid right there, but will this fall, though? No, there, it doesn't look like they aren't going to bother with it. It looks like they're just going to run in the main here. Could potentially do some, a couple drones kill though, a couple drones kill, but there's equally amount of, there's an equal amount of links right over there as well, but somehow, didn't even kill off all those, those drones right there, and a lot of links are dying, one link will finally go, I mean, one drone will find, finally go down, two drones have fallen, three drones have fallen as well right there, four drones have fallen, oh my goodness, that was very, very effective coming out of Irish there for sure, and you know, quite honestly, I don't know why Irish is American, but his name is Irish. BD Irish, Black Dragon Irish, I don't really know why. But, oh, all those cards are right there. Will they connect, though? One did connect, though, but they all melted away due to those five Corsair. If you guys didn't know, five Corsair is the magic number of what I hear from a couple casts before. And I believe one of those Corsair did actually just fall, so they're not at that magical number. It's because um, five of them will allow them to one-shot a Scourge. And it looks like no more production right now. He also has taken a natural right here, has just gone down. And Corsair just chilling over here and all, all these overlords will eventually might fall but a uh, uh, sport colony is out so that we'll have to make a push out right now he's just trying to find a sweet spot where he's not being attacked right now and it looks like he might be able to soften up those uh, overlords but at the same time there's a, another ling and ling action over here as well right here just so many links right here and Irish is getting completely sandwiched and again he's gonna lose all of his links right here and he just did so which means his base is a little susceptible right here he's getting up a spy right now around around two-thirds 66% done right there and um, my voice is getting slowly hurting from casting for so much today. Mm. But that's all right. Also, we're gonna see good sending over a, a slew of lings down to uh, Hex's base right here. I don't see this is really gonna do too much. There's way too many uh, Zelda here, and they don't do not have plus one right now. They forced a cancel on one of the cans, but no, didn't even do anything. Just foddered at least probably 200 minerals worth of just lings right there. Not the best cost effectiveness right there, and I'm not quite sure if he has Storm yet. I'm assuming he does, eventually speaking. He just he probably just got his Templar Archives. And we're still seeing really nothing coming out of... Well, we're seeing Hydra done. He probably has upgrades, because he's getting gas. I mean, I, I mean, he's fully saturating that gas as well. But he's off of one base. He needs to go take a base right now. Or right, something along those lines right now. But I definitely give the advantage to Black Dragons right now. They're getting that map control, and they have so many Corsair. And at the same time, though... 
Hexa, Hexa has been left untouched for this entire game. He's going to be able to macro up. He's going to be able to get his upgrades eventually. He's even getting Archon to the mix here. And uh, looks like a couple three scouting uh, Zerglings are over here. But we'll just quickly get Nom 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 away from the Zelt over there. And... I mean, I haven't really paid much attention to him, but he's putting down two more gateways, so he's going to be up for four gate with two Stargate. I'll be interested if he's going to continue to produce course there. I don't think he needs to, but, I mean, once these mutant numbers get up too, too high, you may want to start getting those. But, um, looks like that uh, zone will fall, which it will, and did ping over here, which I have no idea what it's for. Oh, he's going to try to snipe off that right there. S air? I don't, really, I don't really know what S air means, but, uh... Just getting ready to run. All those scourge are going to be right there. Will be enough. Those scourge will connect. And all those scourge, all those scourge there just completely get obliterated right there. And nice little victory coming out of uh, Fofo right there. Or Fufu. Is it Fofo? It's Fofo. And that looks like that Overlord will get sniped off, which will supply block him. He's at 26 supply compared to his partner is at 22. And we're going to be seeing what, um... We're seeing 34 supply. Very low. It's 9 minutes in the game. And 74 supply coming out of... Coming out of Hexa right now. So Hexa is really kind of helping Black Dragon. And this is what sometimes what TBT will end up being. You know, one player will, you know, do a lot of aggression while the other player can macro behind it. Which is, you know, not a bad strategy. Because, like, what we're seeing right here is that we saw Rip's clan or Rip's team go for a double aggression, which failed. Didn't kill off his opponent right here. Because, I mean, let's be honest here, Iris is a pretty well-played player here, and he was able and he was able to deal with that very, very well. He didn't take any really drone kills here. And even on the flip side of that, Fofo lost four lings on a counter push. Like, that's kind of how ridiculous that is. So, I mean, that, that first push is not a bad idea by any means, but it just... You 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 want to fit, you want to kill your opponent outright with that. Like, that's like... You're, you're going for a build that you want to end your opponent with right there. So, keep that in mind as well. Oh, that's sneaky. He took a base down here as well at that uh, 6 o'clock and at the 12 o'clock. Interesting enough, especially right on the third of Fofo right now. And uh, uh, good. He's continuing to produce more Hydra. I believe that is range or speed. Either way, he's going to get game both upgrades. But, uh, oh, F uh, Fofo, the uh, Muta are working. A couple hits right there. The Art Scourge right here. Will those connect? I don't think they will. I think I think Irish will have a, pretty, a good amount of micro right here. Ooh, he might be able to exploit this... The area, especially with that plus one missile finishing up right there, and will that scourge connect? It will. You know, taking two scourge hits, he didn't need to take right there, and I don't think going in range of the spore is going to do much good for him. A lot of Hydra are making their way over. To, it looks like what it is to Arsh's base here, and Hydra versus Lane. I believe Hydra will win that battle, but I've never seen it before, so I have to make sure. But if he's able to cancel off this missile upgrade, that's really going to help him for sure. And uh, getting up double spore on the main base just so these you know, don't kill off the whole mineral line of what the 30 supply and losing five drones would not be the best idea. But um, you know, are just trying to defend that with a 100 with 100 HP left. And let's see these hydra are gonna be making their way over here as well. But it looks like they're gonna stop for right now. They don't seem like they don't. I'm surprised. Um, you know why? He probably didn't want to get. He probably knew that. Th Protoss army was going to go help, so he didn't want to lose his whole Hydra army. Which, you know, which I wish a lot of other players would do from that mindset, but he needs to do that because he's level one base. And most times, Zoris can afford to lose, you know, 20, 30 Hydra because they're off of like eight bases. I mean, uh, no, three bases with like five hatcheries, so they're able to produce a lot of Hydra at once. But I mean, it would be always good, but oh, this is a big, big, big push coming out of. Uh, a black dragon right here, and this might just be gay. I don't know. It doesn't look like that, that at all right now, but... Ooh, Overlord is vulnerable right there. And, ooh, there are four cans here. It looks like he's just trying to go for it. And his, his cans are pretty good against Hydra. I mean, Muta. Muta, sorry. Ooh, what do we have here? A lot of Hydra going around the other side to the third. Checking probably for a protest third, if that was happening. As, uh... I guess... I, I, I guess I can just say... <laughs> Hex is a pretty cocky dude by just wanting to go take a a uh, the third of your opponent, but um, a lot of Hydra on Hydra army over here, but did lose, I believe, quite a few. All those Hydra right there, and, a, and the Protoss army is going to be going in here, and now will there be enough damage right there? And this is a lot of Hydra right here, and things are looking kind of grim for the Protoss, for uh, Hex's army right here. Storm is going off the storm, oh, right over there, looking at that carnage over there, crazy shenanigans, crazy damage, actually. Storming even the Hydra right there, which will just sort, um, I mean the Muta, which will soften that up, will snipe up that Hydra Temple at the same time. 
crazy 2v2 battle, and I'm loving this game right now. I'm getting so I like I'm out of my chair right now. I love 2v2s, but they're you know probably because you know you don't you don't. I feel like I would get spoiled by them if I had, if I cast them as much as 1v1s because I love 1 1v1s as well. I think it's just one of these like uh, rare occasions where I get one 2v2 here and there, and it's great. But and we're seeing at 64 supply. Let's just look at the supply gun right here. We're seeing that. Um, it's not Ireland. <laughs> What's his name? I forget. Irish has 64 supply to 43 of Fofo compared to the 32, the laughable 32 at 13 minutes in the, almost 14 minutes in the game from, excuse me, good right here and Hexa off of 4 base is at an, an amazing 118. He has plus 1. He's he getting more upgrades. I believe I said double forge. He's getting double forge upgrades. He's getting plus one armor. Plus, uh, but he's getting upgrades. But a big muta battle is happening over here as well. Taking a lot of hits. That's just too many muta. They're plus one as well. And, Ir and Irish is just not looking good. I Irish is looking very, very strong right here. And going muta against an opponent that has many has more mutas and especially more upgrades than you is not a good idea. But uh, at the same time, Protoss will be attacking the main base of good right here. Now, will this be enough though? He will have Storm, though. Storm is pretty good. He does have enough for almost a, almost like a Storm here. But it might be a little hard to break up this. But I think if he was able to bring his main army there, I think he could eventually break through that. 110 supply to 27. And uh, we're 71 supply coming out of I I Irish right here compared to 49 of Fofo. So Fofo is trying to make his way ba back in this game here. Trying to get as much Scourge and Air as possible here. He's just trying to prolong this game. But I really don't see how Reps... How Reps team can come back from in this game right now. This is they're just too far behind. You know, Black Dragon has done very, very well to maintain their center map control. They they're able to contain very, very well. They know when to push and they know when to push out for sure. And not to say that you know Reps doesn't know how to do that. We saw over here that when he had his Hydra army, he could have pushed in potentially done, maybe done at least at least taking out half the health on this hatchery, if not killed it. But, oh, but there's a lot of air on air battle there. All the Scourge are connecting. Oh, my goodness gracious. So much Muta are battling in the center of the field. And it definitely looks like Irish is going to be able to pull a victory through that battle. And it looks like that victory will eventually secure a win for Black Dragons in this awesome game. So, that was awesome. And for fifth tip of the game here, I'm just going to say it outright here. Uh, we saw a double pressure build that was all in. We saw, like, a double nine pool like build. Except we saw a nine pool coming out of of good, and we saw a a like a macro hatch into uh, like uh, with a timing push with that. So Fofo wasn't nearly as all in as Zergood was, but when you what you, you could see what happens when that when that push doesn't work. We saw good Zergood went for that super on aggression, and we saw that he was only off of one base. He didn't even have Lair, and he was only able to produce you know X amount of Hydra. And he was at like 32 supply by 14 minutes of the game. On the flip side of Fofo, we saw him mean, he was around 50 supply. He was getting more muta out. He didn't get upgrades. Compared, and then when you look at when you compare it to Irish, who was you know played it very well. He defended. He didn't take any kind of damage. And he was one basic for a majority of the time. He waited for the correct moment to go take his natural. He was nearly up 20 supply. He had upgrades. And his decision making was really good for the engagements. He did that last battle. He had a lot of scourge connecting, but you know, it didn't really matter at that point. I mean, if it was a one v one, that might have mattered. But you know, with with the support of Hexa that was moving out of, if you saw on the mini map, Zer he he was Hexa was leaving Zergood's base to go help him reinforce that attack. So awesome stuff there for sure. And you know, we're just seeing that that double pressure build did, doesn't always work. And it, it, it snowballs you into the late game or mid game, at least is what we saw. It really starts to hurt you. So, I say, go for I mean, there's really much shit. You just win a build that didn't work. It happens. That's kind of what happened. I mean, I recommend don't do that. My own personal taste. But I actually say, I actually all in way more than I actually play macro games. Because, uh, you know, my macro isn't really that good. So, I can understand where some players realize, well... I'm good at doing an early game aggression versus, you know, going in the mid and late game stages of the game where my where I start swinging my macro. You know, that might be what their what their thought process is on this. But um that would concludes that sadly though, yeah, well that's pretty much concludes that game, but this also concludes the series for the extent. Keep in mind this is the best of three, but uh, the other two replays are non existent right now. And I can't get my hands on them. 
So, um, that means, um, I hate to tell it to you guys, Black Dragons looked awesome that game, but they ultimately lost this, this matchup. Or series, excuse me, this series. Series number one does go to refs. They did somehow put... I pull a 2-1. A two, uh, two I don't know how they did it. A 2-1 lead. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Which means Rip does get this win right here. And it's hard to bear, but they did get it. So, um, thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day. Peace.